Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Davis. I'm a field crop entomologist for the LSU Ag Center and I have the pleasure today to talk to you about our project on host plant resistance in uh, sweet potato. So what we have here is that we have different tools and techniques that we use for integrated pest management. The project I'm going to be talking about today was recently funded by the USDA NEFA, a crop protection and pest management grant entitled Keep It Simple. My major professors always told me to use the KISS uh, principle, which was to keep it simple stupid. And I think they meant that maybe I'm not the smartest, but here I am and here's what we're going to talk about. So the same kind of idea, we're going to keep it simple. So what we have for our growers today is we have different sweet potato varieties. Don Labonte at the LSU Ag Center has bred various very good varieties for our production in Louisiana. And the th four varieties that we're using on this project are Beauregard, of course the most commonly grown in the United States, Vermilion, recently released, uh, Orleans, also very good producer, and Murasaki. Now, these four varieties have some differences within them. Orleans and Beauregard, from our research here at the LSU Ag Center, are susceptible to sweet potato weevil. And that's the insect that I'm going to be talking about today as an entomologist. Uh, Silas formicarius is the sweet potato weevil. It is one of our major root pests that we have in sweet potato. And it can be a major in player in yield reduction. Now, one of the problems with sweet potato weevil is the fact that it, one feeding by one weevil can cause these terpenes that give an off flavor to the sweet potato. So it also is a, a quarantinable pest, so we have to be careful with this insect. Our project is to focus on trying to reduce those populations in the field. I'll get back to those four varieties. So Beauregard, Orleans, very susceptible to sweet potato weevil. Vermilion, somewhere in between. Not as susceptible as Orleans and Beauregard, but not as resistant as Murasaki. Now, Murasaki, if you don't know that variety, it's a white flesh, purple skin, more of a Asian and African market, per se, uh, and not that yellow or orange flesh that you're used to. So it's not as sweet, uh, much more carbohydrate, okay? But it does have a good producer. All of these are commercial varieties that any grower can get. Uh, within that project, what we're trying to do, as I said, is to reduce sweet potato weevil injury and damage to the storage roots. By doing so, we're using an integrated pest management approach. Of course, as you may know, integrated pest management is this whole idea of using ecosystem-based, agroecology-based projects, tools and tactics, per se, to try to reduce pest damage. For this, we are focusing on using three different techniques. One of those is using our monitoring. So with any integrated pest management process, we use a monitoring tool. Typically what we're gonna do is in sweet potato, we would use our sweep, uh, sweep net, something that is very similar to here. You can see this one is very well used. And what would you do is you would go through the foliage, sweeping back and forth, trying to determine what insects are available. You then look in your bag, count the number that might be there. All these banded cucumber beetles that we're seeing, all flying out of there. That is a banded cucumber beetle. Okay, it's a banded cucumber beetle, okay. Uh, they will lay their eggs in the soil, the larvae will feed on the storage roots. Now for sweet potato weevil, because it is a much more uh, diurnal, it spends a lot of time in, that, uh, in the foliage, spends more time in that crepuscular, actually, and nocturnal time of the day, we have to use something like this. This is a pheromone trap. Now, this is not probably one that you would typically see out that LDAF, that's Louisiana Department of Ag and Forestry, uses, but this is more of a universal trap that we use. Within this, we have a pheromone that, if I can get it out of here, is placed in a rubber septum within a container such as this. Uh, we change this every four weeks, and this, this rubber septum has a pheromone that's going to attract sweet potato weevils. Now this is a female sex pheromone, so it attracts the males. The weevils then are attracted to this, fall down into the bucket. Uh, this bucket then has like a little kill strip uh, that kills the insects, and then we count and come and count numbers. 
Now, these are very good. They count the number of males that might be in the field. And you get raw numbers. You get, you know, somewhere in the tens to twenties. What you don't want to see in your field is, you know, hundreds to thousands. What you want to see is less than that. But what we're trying to do is enhance this monitoring. So in the integrated pest management, we know the numbers and by those based on those numbers, we're going to make and decide to make an insecticide application. I, as a field crop entomologist, my whole purpose is to get farmers to grow more food with less inputs. So I want to reduce those chemicals that go out there. These pheromone traps work very well in monitoring, count the number of insects. However, if we want to count both males and females, we want to enhance that. So we're having a part of our project, and what we're looking at is using these sex pheromones, the female sex pheromone to attract the males, and then we're introducing different uh, chemicals that these plants normally give off. For instance, much like when you cut the grass and there's that smell, those green plant volatiles that you smell, the same kind of thing. We're trying to use volatiles that sweet potatoes produce and use those in these pheromone monitoring to count the number of weevils, to increase the numbers that might be out there so we can get the females as well. The second aspect of integrated pest management is once we know those numbers, is to try to reduce overall the damage that might be occurring. We can reduce the overall populations of the insects. By doing so, we can use host plant resistance. Those four varieties that I talked about earlier, once again, Beauregard, Vermilion, Orleans, and Murasaki differ in their host plant resistance. I mentioned before, Orleans and Beauregard susceptible, much more susceptible to sweet potato weevil than Murasaki. The research that we're doing is looking at how do the females oviposit on these storage roots once they get down into the ground, and we find that the weevils oviposit less on Murasaki than they do on Orleans or on Beauregard, which means that they're actually having less eggs on those plants and less feeding occurring. Now, when those eggs hatch, they, the larvae burrow into those storage roots. That's where they're doing their, most of their uh, growth. They'll then pupate within those storage roots and emerge as adults. The adults that emerge out of Murasaki, not only do we see less eggs being laid, but we see less adults emerging out of Murasaki. So here we have this plant that has natural defenses already, that the storage roots that are already killing off some of these pests. To enhance that, typically farmers use insecticides. We're looking at that, we are using different insecticides, and we're trying to also synergize those insecticides with entomopathogens. So what is an entomopathogen? That is a normal disease that only insects get. We get diseases, <laughs> it's very been the last couple of years. We know all about the different diseases that we're getting in, as humans. Insects get diseases as well. One of those is a fungi, metarhizium, and we're using these commercially available metarhizium products to spray on top of our sweet potato canopy to enhance the natural resistance. So not only are we using insecticides, we're combining those with this host plant resistance and these entomopathogens. What we found so far with our entomopathogens is that if we combine them with Murasaki, we see even further reduction. We can almost zero out the number of sweet potato weevils feeding on those storage roots. We can significantly reduce the number that are also feeding on Orleans and Beauregard. Can we completely eliminate them from those varieties? No. Can we completely eliminate them from the field? That's not our job. Our job is to try to reduce the population so you don't see them. Elimination, extinction of those species is not going to happen. We don't want them in our green tag zones. That's that part of that quarantine. But in our pink tag zones, we need to reduce those populations. And we can do so using these different tools and tactics and the things that we're studying in this project. So once again, using advanced monitoring, what we're finding is these plant volatiles do and we can attract the females as well using the different varieties that natural host plant resistance that's in those plants to reduce these sweet potato weevils and using a commercially available entomopathogen metarhizium that we spray three times throughout the year to try and create those fungi spores the fungal spores that'll be out there to kill those weevils now louisiana perfect conditions for fungal pathogens as you know what do we need? Humidity, heat, 
We have those in our field. We have had a lot of moisture also. Those work very well. So what we're gonna have in the next year or two is we're gonna have these best management practices for our producers that will incorporate all these different tools and techniques. Thank you very much.